Hello, Lion Bolt Kingdom. Tonight, the Academy Awards will air. And it also happens to be my birthday, March 10th. To be honest with you, I don't really care about the awards, with the exception of the Best Animated Feature category. I thought I'd give a rundown of the five nominees, my spoiler-free thoughts and predictions, and we'll see if I predict it right. Please note any opinions of the films are my own. Please feel free to like what you like and don't like what you don't. For new friends, I'm Lionbolt, artist, animator, and author of the YA urban fantasy mystery series Detective King. You can learn more about all that in the description. Let's start with Robot Dreams. The only one of the nominees I haven't seen, this is because it has not yet had a full release in the US, it is a Spanish and French production, and while it had a very limited screening on March 6th in the US, from what I saw there was only one theater in Chicago playing it, so chances are most people won't see it here until either it gets a wide release or uh, it goes on streaming. I believe it gets in theaters in the summer. It hits UK theaters March 22nd. What we do know about it though is that it is a story about the friendship of a dog and a robot in New York City. Uh, there is no dialogue and the animation style looks super cute. Its reviews so far have been pretty good too. General consensus is that it's unlikely to win, but I am interested in seeing it when I can. Nimona From Netflix Animation and Annapurna Pictures, and based off a graphic novel, my understanding is that the film was originally going to be made by Blue Sky, or was being made by Blue Sky, when Disney bought it and folded the studio. Nimona got cancelled, only for Netflix to pick it up. So watching it succeed has been enjoyable for those of us who would like to see Disney get some healthy competition, to put it nicely. To be honest with you, however, I was overall mixed on Nimona. Uh, the good points were that uh, it, it was a really innovative concept, M Nimona is a really interesting and fun character, and Chloe Grace Moretz's voice performance was top notch. I also love fantasy sci-fi settings, you don't see them too often, but they always rule. There were also some very enjoyable scenes, uh, chase scenes and breakout scenes are always fun, and the visuals during the climax are pretty awesome. I won't give away what happens though. The film is also notable for its LGBTQ representation, which is cool, although I feel like the main couple lacked in chemistry, but I don't know, that's just me. My issues largely had to do with the tone and overall feel of the movie. The story was inherently rather dark, sometimes very dark but it was at other times presented as a goofy kids movie with its comedy, leaving me in a strange in-between spot where the comedy mostly didn't really land or didn't feel appropriate given the mood, or I would get whiplash between silly and serious scenes. I also felt that overall the art style was kinda lacking. It kinda reminded me of Ruby, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it sort of just felt unfinished or unpolished to me. Elemental. Disney Pixar's entry of the year, and Disney's only nominee, as Wish rightfully did not receive a nomination. I wasn't interested enough in this film to see it in the theater, but I was pleasantly surprised by it nonetheless. The first word that comes to mind is cute. At its heart, it's a cute love story. This is a leading couple with chemistry. Maybe that was my problem with Dallister and Ambrosius uh, from Nimona, is that they kinda had the same personality, kinda stuffy, committed to duty, while, and while it's true they conflict via the external conflict, there isn't really enough contrast between them and their personalities and their cores to make for an interesting couple. Whereas Ember and Wade, on the other hand, are literally fire and water, with one being hot-headed and the other crybaby, and, but yet opposites attract and they form an unlikely connection. Right off the bat, it's an interesting dynamic. Pixar's animation of course never misses, and they've built an interesting world with a lot of fun quirks. The immigrant story of Ember's family is also really interesting, and I think it adds a lot. It's not Pixar's best film, not by a long shot, but again it's cute, it's fun, nothing particularly bad about it, but nothing extraordinary either. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse The sequel to the 2019 Academy Award winner Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Obviously, it is a visual masterpiece and shows just what animation can achieve. Just about every frame of the movie is gorgeous. It's a thoroughly enjoyable film, particularly if you're a fan of the first movie. My problem with it is that it feels incomplete, like it's half of a movie, which it kind of is. Without giving away the end, it ends on a sort of cliffhanger setting up the next movie in the series. So I left the theater feeling somewhat unsatisfied. 
While the first movie felt perfectly paced and everything felt like it had a great payoff, Across the Spider-Verse felt like it set up a lot of cool stuff, but without any conclusions or payoff. I also felt like parts of it were a bit slow, which I didn't feel with the first movie. Plenty of people will disagree with my assessment, but I stand by my opinion that Into the Spider-Verse is better than Across, and that Across will only shine the way it should once its second half is out with Beyond the Spider-Verse. The Boy and the Heron, also known as Kimitechi wa do ikiruka, How Do You Live, possibly the final work of renowned director Hayao Miyazaki of Studio Ghibli, a masterful film about lost legacy in life. I think of all the nominees, this one has the most heart, drawing from Miyazaki's own childhood experience with fantastical flourish. The film I find myself comparing it to most is Spirited Away. It feels in some way to be something of a spiritual sequel, if that makes sense. Uh, the animation and imagination involved in this film is on a level all its own. It took seven years to make. It had something to say and did so beautifully, which is why I think it should win, just as it won the Golden Globe and BAFTA awards. My original prediction was for Across the Spider-Verse to win the award. It won the Annie Award for Best Picture, and is definitely the more mainstream pick. It's also a very impressive film in its own right, but upon reflection and seeing the reception that The Boy and the Heron has received not just in Japan but around the world has changed my prediction. I think the bookend of Miyazaki's career ending with a second Oscar is too powerful a storyline for the Academy to pass up, and I think they will ultimately recognize that it should win. I have questioned their decisions in the past many times. For instance, I strongly believe Miyazaki's previous nomination, The Wind Rises, should have won in 2013 over Frozen, but I've been encouraged by some of their recent decisions, uh, particularly Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio winning last year. So we'll see whether I'm right tonight. What are your thoughts on these films, your predictions, or if you're watching this after the awards, your reactions? Leave a comment and let me know, and remember to like and subscribe for more content. It might be a while until my next video as I prepare for Anime Central. Lots to prepare for, but until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.